Once upon a time, in Ellison's brain, the feelings joy, trust, hope, frustration, sadness and fear lived together in a city called Brainfield. Obviously, they weren't the only ones living there, there were thousands of feelings with them, but those are the main ones. The city was really common, a lot of houses together, the central square, the Brainfield's White House, a sadness restaurant, a hospital, a school, police station. The mayor of the city was Joy, the chef of the restaurant was Sadness, Trust was a police officer, Fear was an engineer, Hope was a doctor, and Frustration was an employee. Poor Frustration. They've lived together in pure harmony, or that's what they thought. Allison was going through a lot of changes because she was entering middle school and her best friend was moving out of the city. The problem was that the feelings had no idea of what was going on outside the brain and they didn't know that when something changes on the outside, the inside part also changes. The problem was just about to start. Let's go then. One day, Joy decided to make a speech. Good morning, everyone. I'm here to make an announcement about a new business that I'm going to open. It's going to be a restaurant and it's going to be opening in less than a week. I hope everyone to be in a launch day. Thank you for your time, she said. Later that day, the friend, the friend sadness, frustration and fear were chilling in sadness restaurant when fear said, Hey, aren't you worried about Joy opening any restaurant sadness? No, why should I be? answered Sadness. I mean, it's Joy's restaurant. She's the mayor, said Frustration. I haven't thought about this this way. Perhaps you guys are right, agreed Sadness. Be careful for not being bankrupted, man, said Fear. That night, Sadness couldn't sleep. He just could think about what would happen when Joy's restaurant launched. He was worried about what the feelings would eat from that day on. The week was over and Joy's restaurant was already open. The business in Sadness restaurant fell so much that his only clients left were fear and frustration. Hey Sadness, said frustration entering the restaurant. Oh, hey, answered Sadness. Are you okay? You look a bit worried. I'm panicking. You and Fear are my only clients left. If things keep going this way, I'll have to close. Don't you have any ideas? Sadness kept thinking in silence for a moment and then said, You know what? I know exactly what to do. He took off his cooking apron and left with a worried face straight to the White House. He had just had the craziest idea. He decided to kidnap Joy, steal her recipes, and force her to close the restaurant. And there he went. Excuse me, could I talk to Joy? Said Nezos calmly to trust Joy's bodyguard when he arrived at, at the White House's front door. I'll check if she lets you in, said Trust, calling Joy. Joy? Sadness is here and wants to talk to you. Should I let him in? <laughs> okay. What did she say? She said you can go. Thank you. The biggest problem was that he didn't even have a plan. How he supposed that it was going to work? Hey, Sadness. How can I help you? Joy asked. He locked the door. At that moment, Allison basically locked herself from the world too. She got up from the couch and locked herself inside the bedroom, trying not to think about anything. She couldn't hear her mom calling her, neither the messages popping up in her phone. She was sat on her bed, avoiding talking to anyone. Why did you lock the door, Sadness? asked Joy. Because I need your recipes. I don't plan to let you out while you don't assure me that you're going to close the restaurant and pass me 
all your recipes. Oh, sadness, dear. You're being so silly right now. Anytime soon, someone will miss me and put that door down. I'll prefer to wait then. You know what, Joy? Everybody thinks that you're perfect, but you're just a stupid feeling as like all of us here in Brayfield. You knew I was going to be bankrupted if you opened a restaurant, but even though you did it, you're selfish. They started to discuss. It was a truly mess. Everybody on the outside could hear them screaming. It's not about me being selfish, Sadness. It's about you not dealing with the fact that I'll always be better than you, no matter what, said Joy. Sadness didn't have any reaction for a moment because he thought that what she said was true. Before he could say anything, Trust broke into the room and Joy started to scream. He's kidnapping me! He's kidnapping me! Trust arrested him and took him to jail. The only thing he was thinking about was that he shouldn't have done that. He just shouldn't. He just couldn't. While completing his first weeks of sentence as the first Brainfields prisoner, awful things were happening inside Sadness' cell and also everything in Brainfield. The square was destroyed, the houses were falling apart, leaving everyone desperate and not knowing what to do. Except for Hope, they knew exactly what to do. In the following morning, she went to jail and said she needed to talk to Sadness. Trust said it was okay, but she couldn't take too long. Hey, Sadness, said Hope. Hope, what are you doing here? Asked Sadness, surprised. I'm here to listen to your point of view, so please tell me every single detail. Sadness told her everything that happened. Every single detail, not missing anything. I was desperate. I shouldn't have done that, said Sadness when he finished the whole story. I know. I'm going to try to clean you off this because since you have been arrested, the entire city became a mess. I only need you to apologize to Joy, said Hope. Of course. Thank you so much, Hope, said Sadness. Hope went to talk to Trust. She explained the whole situation and after a lot of conversation, Trust released its Sadness, who immediately went to apologize to Joy. What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be in prison? Asked Joy. I was, but I was released. Hope can explain to you later. I only needed to listen to me. I'm sorry, I really am, and I hope you can understand that the only reason why I did that was because I was panicking about having to close the restaurant. And also I was gonna be bankrupted, said Sadness. Joy kept in silence for a few seconds and then said, It's fine. I'm also sorry for everything I said. I'm not better than anyone. And I have an idea. Would you like to be my partner at the restaurant? Wait, are you serious? I would love to, replied Sadness. Suddenly, they heard a voice outside the White House saying, Hello, is there anyone in here? Immediately, Sadness and Joy went there and asked him, Who are you? What are you doing here? Hi, I'm Resilience. Nice to meet you. I'm new here. I heard you were looking for a new waiter. They shook hands and all feelings started to rebuild together brain feud. Things were finally getting back to normal. Allison was also fine. She knew everything was going to change, but she was okay with that. But would it be totally okay with all those feelings living inside her mind? Would they like to eat from Sadness and Joy's restaurant from that day on? What do your feelings eat? 